Okay, so I'm going to attempt again to uh, go over this question and show step by step how we get the answer for this. So I'll read the question again. And it asks if an individual has the genotype XXY, did the non disjunction occur in their mother or their father, and at which division, meiosis 1 or meiosis 2? So, first thing we should realize if we write out the genotype of the resulting offspring, we can see that there's an extra copy of an X chromosome. And hopefully you realize, remember that males have the sex chromosomes XY, and we know females have chromosomes XX, sex chromosomes XX. So hopefully you realize that in this case to get two X's, it should be able to happen in females. We know this Y has to come from dad, right here. So we want to know, can dad give an extra X in this case? Okay, so we'll work through and we'll see how that works. So for this case, I'm going to use a small X to represent the X chromosome. I'm going to use a big X to represent the Y chromosome. And I'll use a squiggly X to represent chromosome 17, just a random chromosome, just so we can track it as it moves through. Okay, so I'll draw my chromosomes in first. We'll go through meiosis one, uh, where the non-disjunction would occur, and then we'll go through meiosis two after. So here's chromosome 17, or squiggly X, and we know the non-disjunction uh, is gonna occur uh, in our sex chromosomes. The first thing you wanna notice is that these will occur in tetrads, um, so it will have a homologous, homologous pair here um, because the DNA duplicates in interphase. And our tetrad here would be 1X because we're doing dad first and 1Y, so an XY chromosome. Okay, so after uh, we go through meiosis 1, um, chromosome 17 is going to separate normally. So one Chromosome 17 will get pulled over here. One chromosome 17 will get pulled over here. Our X and our Y are not going to separate. So I'll put the X here and the Y here. Because remember in metaphase they'll line up in the middle. And then they're going to go through anaphase again and separate. So I'll start with the cell on the right. And it's going to get pulled apart. One chromatid on this side, one chromatid on that side. Over here again, chromosome 17 gets pulled apart. One over here, one over here. One strand of X gets pulled here, one over there, and again, one chromatid of Y over here, and one chromatid of Y. So if we look at the resulting cell, in our first cell, we have an X and a Y chromosome. As we, uh, we have the same in our second cell, another X and a Y. And these two chromosomes only have one copy of chromosome 17. So you can see that these two are miss, are, have one extra copy, and these two cells have one less copy. Okay, so we have an X and a Y for dad. So if this was dad in this case, if non-disjunction happened in meiosis one, and that sperm cell went on to fertilize, he'd be given an XY. Mom always gives one copy of X. Sorry about that. Okay, so I have an X here. And when they go to fertilize, they would end up with a baby XXY. So in that case, it can happen in dad and meiosis one because that's what we were looking for, XXY. Okay, so let's see if it can happen in meiosis two for dad. So again, we'll start with chromosome 17 in its tetrad form. And then we have our X and our Y chromosome in their tetrads. So in this case, again, one copy is gonna get pulled over here for 17, one over here for 17. And now our X and our Y are gonna separate. We know the non-disjunction is occurring at the X, so I will draw the X chromosome over here. And the Y chromosome will get pulled over to the right. So again, we'll do the right cell first. One strand of chromosome 17 here, one here, one chromatid from chromosome Y over here, and one here. And then the opposite, chromosome 17 gets pulled apart, but our X chromosome is where the non-disjunction is occurring, so this one's not gonna get pulled apart. So let's say in this left cell, it would have two copies of the X chromosome, and over here, nothing. So our resulting cells, dads would look like XX here, 
no sex chromosome in this case, and then we have a Y and a Y. So you can see that in this case, we don't end up with an XY. We end up with an XX instead, and if we were to have that XX from dad plus an X from mom, would result in three X's, and so that's not what we're looking for. So we know it happens in meiosis one for dad, but not in meiosis two. And if we want to check for mom, the easiest way is to replace any Y's with X's. So if we go back to meiosis one, for this XY, we would have an XX instead. And then for this XY, again, we would have an XX. And then over here, we would just have an X and an X. So if mom was to give an XX in this case, dad would have to give a Y, which would also result in X, X, Y. And you could see mom, in this case, would end up in the same thing, would also give X, X. So in this case, it can happen for mom in both meiosis one and meiosis two. So that's where the non-destruction can happen. So if we look at our answers, we can see D has meiosis one and two for mom, but only meiosis one and dad, and that's exactly our answer there.